What makes playing Madison Square Garden so special is being a New York band and having grown up in New York, Madison Square Garden was always the pinnacle of what you hoped for. I went there to see other bands play, and it was always my dream to play there. And to this day, it holds a very special spot for all of us. Best play you've ever made in living. I'll tell you what, if I can still keep the bus, you can go out and do the show. Doc McGee had an idea, a big idea, and that's what we like about it. He took the point of view that if a promoter is going to be involved with KISS, you should look like KISS. So there was a rule. You don't get a KISS date unless you dress up like KISS. These guys do two, three hundred shows a year. And in order to get them into our show to be the show that they focused on, I felt it was important to get them interested in KISS. So part of my deal was is they had to show up in makeup, in costume. And when it first started out, it was like, oh my God, I got to get into makeup. And then after everybody was seen around the world in Performance Magazine and, and Hits Magazine and uh, Album Network, all of a sudden people are spending $2,000 in makeup and, <laughs> and costumes and boots to show up as Kiss and having a ball. We made an event. And that's what KISS is. It was a real surprise to see Bill Coin. With him being our original manager, we had a whole lot of memories with him. It seems like another lifetime, and yet it seems like yesterday. Being back there, I don't know, 20 years, 17 years, was a very holy place to me because my mother wasn't there and my father wasn't there. It was a great time, but very hard on, on my heart. Uh, all the other guys' parents were living. Uh, God bless them, and I sent all the mom's roses from me that night. My mother loved blue roses, and so I had them every night give me blue roses to hand out to the audience during Beth, and I would sing it to her, and at the end I would say, that's for you, Mom. That goes for you, Mom. One thing about Gene, and he really listens to things that a lot of people don't. And I found that out more this time around as I got to know him better. When I said, I love Tony Bennett, I love Frank Sinatra, I love Benny Goodman. He's like he's the greatest singer. I didn't think he had any appreciation for anything more than Kiss. And when I went into the dressing room, there's the whole Tony Bennett collection. Tony Bennett. I was pretty taken by that. He remembered that I liked that music, and he went out of his way and got me a... New York fans are very, very demanding. They will tear up their seats and throw them at a band on stage, which they've done in the past, if they don't like what they see and what they hear. You guys own this place, but that's right. Burn it down, all right? All right, let's go, baby! But I tell you, if the word party was ever invented for an event, those shows were like parties. Everybody was on their feet from beginning to end. It was very clear that Big Bad New York all of a sudden decided to have a party. It was a thrill. When the buzz got out that KISS was finally going to reunite, that the impossible was going to happen, it spread like wildfire. Many of the magazines that wanted us on the cover, we refused. But Spin got it early on. They were ready to do four separate covers, something they had never done before. And just like us, they were ready to break ground. And together we did. The issues came out, and they were by far the biggest sellers they'd ever had. News was spreading quickly that the Alive Worldwide Tour was going to be a bigger success than anyone had even imagined. 
Kiss is back, the original four members in the original makeup. Oh God, am I excited. I've been waiting 20 something years for this. Bueno, salimos un instante de este enorme recinto. Break out your face paint, get ready to rock. Hundreds of fans will kiss and tell after their date tonight. Soy mi Kike Chile. With the enormous reaction to the first month of the tour, the Kiss buzz soared to new heights. Forbes magazine came to us and wanted to put us on the cover. We thought that was a strange request, but why not? If we can help them look cool, so much the better. One of the great things about KISS is that we don't live or die by the press. And it's much more important to us to go out on stage and be received by an audience that's ecstatic and meets us with open arms and legs. It's really something to look out there and see people who have waited for this day, sometimes 20 years, and what they think and their reaction is of the utmost importance. And what we see in the newspaper, perhaps a day later, is really of, of minor importance. Most of the time, I just look and hope there's a great photo because the photo is worth a thousand words. At the end of the day, though, after all the hoopla and after all the covers of the magazines and so on, the most important thing for us is gauging our fans. When a fan walks up to you and says, you know, I don't like the second song as much as the fourth, I listen. When a critic has something to say, it means nothing. This guy's being paid for his job, and his opinion just really comes from nowhere. He's not a fan. He doesn't have any emotional vested interest in it. But when a fan talks, the heart speaks, we listen. The Kiss Army started in Terre Haute, Indiana, the heartland of America, by a guy named Bill Starkey. It started around a radio station that wouldn't play our records, and Starkey, who called and basically threatened the guy and said, if you don't play the KISS records, the KISS army will surround you. Somehow it got, got back to us, either through newspapers or letters, about a, an existing KISS army. And we thought the idea was so cool, why not name the fans the KISS army? So the fan club was named that and so on. It started very naturally and kept growing. They treat their fans with respect. They give their, the fans what they pay for, their money's worth. They give everything to their fans that they have. They've been doing it for years. Part of the magic of KISS is that the appeal is so widespread. There's something of KISS that affects everybody. Well, they're all very talented, but I love Paul's ass in particular. <laughs> we have fans who were there from the beginning some of who now have their own children. And it's almost like a rite of passage to have the children show up and be a part of the concert that may have turned their parents' lives around. It's awesome to look out into an audience and see families, mothers, fathers, children, all part of this unique celebration that's KISS. In the most sincere form of gratitude, all kinds of things get thrown up on stage. Sometimes bras, that's obvious. There have been babies held up. But the one that takes the cake is someone's leg. Up to that point, we thought we'd seen it all, but that one topped them all. If this is an army, this is clearly a volunteer army. Anybody who does something for KISS or about KISS is really doing it from their hearts, and that's the most important thing. KISS is the biggest band of the 70s, 80s, and now 90s, and they're going to prove to the world that they're still the best. They changed rock and roll forever. My only words are, space with ace. We do this for our fans, you know. It's the gratification that we get. You see the faces of the kids. I'm out there playing for them because the kids made me popular and without my fans, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I really worked hard not only to play the old guitar solos as accurately as possible, but to capture the same vibe. I was impressed by hearing uh, lead guitarist perform the solo just like it sounded on the record. To me, that was a groove. The effects I do on stage, like the smoking guitar, were uh, things that came out of my head and, you know, became my trademark over the years. I just went into a fireworks store one day and put a, a smoke bomb inside the Les Paul. I could see people going, oh my God, his guitar's on fire, it's going to explode. It's always been a trip for me to do that. It's one of the most fun parts of the show for me and the audience.